Uh, good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Michelangelo and Alex their presentations about about the hub. Um, um, and I must say that I fully agree on the concepts that they have uh, raised here to you. I mean, now we are entering in a new area that me as a physician, and now I speak about my job, I mean, I cannot work if I'm doing research and innovation without you. And because now the, the, the frontier between clinical work and research and innovation, you know, is, is, is a bunch of grace. I mean, is everything interconnected in this in this new in this new world? First of all, I, I'm my conflict of interest. My conflict of interest. I'm inventor of a patent, a U.S. patent for, I mean, for as a monitoring device for biomedical signals. I'm founder of this company, which is participated by my institution, and I get grants for my research. My job. I am a critical care physician. I, I, I attend patients for 25 years, you know. I did my training in research in, in Canada one year and in the States as a sabbatical and another year. And in 2006 and 2007, I get the responsibility to be the director of the Institute of Innovation and Investigation in Park County. And then, uh, but I keep doing research the whole, the whole my life. What I learned when I was in Canada, that is research we should learn. Okay, we should listening the people you know what i mean what i learned in the united states the team is the basic thing what i learned working with michelangelo and other engineers is i need you i mean if we want to arrive to somewhere when you said that you are presenting to the clinicians your ideas sometimes they are not successful because we did not together asking for the problems that the patients have then if we work together then we got good solutions um, this is my institution. Um, these are simply numbers, but I would like you to transform these numbers in opportunities, in ideas, in problems, in clinical problems, in developments, in solutions. This is exactly what a hospital is. And that, but in my hospital, now we have almost now more than 40 or 45 en engineers, computer science, biomedical, telecos, and so on. Be and Without them, we could not do nothing. This is our institute. I mean, we do personalized medicine, participative, preventive, and predictive. And this is what the hospitals do. They have certain areas of research, the areas that you know, the clinic has the same, somehow, and so on. But most important, in the new world, I mean, we have omic sciences and value-based value -based digital health. And this is transversal to the all disciplines. And is where, in these places where you are. And then, of course, I mean, we have, we can wear artificial intelligence, internet of things, virtual reality, 3D, 5G. These all are technology that now are fully implemented and they are fully needed for doing research and innovation. Just in, the, in my institution, we have labs, technological labs, because we need the labs to solve the problems of the physicians. For example, the 3D lab is for digital surgery, personalized surgery, because we need personalized surgery if we have arthrosis in the hip or in the knee, because each patient is different. So we construct this personalized prosthetic device for this specific patient. Who does that? I mean, one of them was trained in uh, your master additive, additive, uh, ta, 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 I mean, to uh, 50 meters from here. Okay? I mean, it's absolutely new. So, another lab is medical image, another lab is simulation, and another lab, which I am founder or responsible, is the waveforms and artificial intelligence. And also, in the hospital, we must think in, the, in transferring the knowledge, not only to the society, to the industrial field to create, in that case, um, return to create revenues to the institution because this is needed for research and for innovation. And these are the numbers of my institution. I mean, sorry about that. This is, I mean, we have projects and this is clockwise how a project works as an idea, then a paper, then, I mean, we talk with the industry, then we create some licensing or a spin-offs or whatever, but at the end, it gets revenue. 
This is from 2008. We get more than 25 million revenue of our innovation working with the industry. And this is very important because you need that to further develop research and innovation. Because I remind you, in the world, in the world, I mean now the last the last figures, it's governments use 2.7 of the gross domestic power to research and innovation. In Spain is 1.45, in Catalonia is 1.6. If you see the councillor, they say it's higher, but it's not as high as 1.6. Okay, so this is absolutely needed. Current context. This is health. I mean, in Spain and in many countries, we have an excellent health system. Universal, free for everybody. For everybody means for someone who enters in the in the in the in the frontier, okay, from outside, okay, will have the same as you have. So this is very important. This is social, it's absolutely important. And this must be sustained. And if it must be sustained, it means there is knowledge that we need to protect. There is knowledge that we need to transfer to the industry to get revenues to the system. In order what? To do research and innovation, of course, but also to sustain that important and useful health system. This is a very nice article that it tells the health system where it is um, in, in labors, vaccines, time to get an intervention if you have cancer, all the things that matter, that, that matters, okay? So, things are changing in medicine. Until the 80s, we have syndromes. Syndromes is, we touch the patient, I mean, there is a, an enlarged um, labor or whatever. But now, this has changed. A syndrome is you have fever, you have cough, you have secretion, maybe you have pneumonia. No, no, now it's different. We have a patient that, we can study this patient and this syndrome using biological characteristics, which is the physiological parameters, the waveforms, image, genetics, transcriptomics, proteomics, omic sciences, in order to what? To have precision tests and tools. And this is the future. We are phenotyping the diseases because two patients may look the same but they may have different phenotypes that will respond different to the medical treatments and this is very important so that's why here you can see the point of care i mean because maybe we need to do some point of care in the patients when they arrive to the emergency area to see what i'm going to show to you this is data from clinical trials in my in my in my in, in my specialty critical care so these clinical trials, the inclusion criteria were fulfilled by all patients, a syndrome, some lab characteristics or whatsoever. But at the end, I mean, when you look into the omics, these patients, some have a hypoinflammatory phenotype, another one, a hyperinflammatory phenotype. And then the intervention of the clinical trial means that in, in hyperinflammatory or in hypoinflammatory hypo hyper hypo is different so we need to know that because as a result the clinical trial is negative no effect but the effect is inside according to the phenotype and this is the future of the medicine let's keep going on that this is this is now well this slide has at least nine years old First of all, in the center, it was critical care. I mean, several years ago, I substituted that by hospital. Then I substituted that by health. But now is value-based digital health. Why that? Because now in the hospitals, we need all these disciplines. The disciplines that I don't know nothing, but I need. I need, I know things, but not that. And these disciplines are related with new materials, bioprintings, whatever, simulations, synthetic biology, digital twins, chats, artificial intelligence, whatever. These need to be secure, need to be in the cloud, 3D, photonics, virtual augmented reality, big data. We are treating patients with augmented reality for some cognitive alteration that they have because they were, you know, um, you know admitted in the hospital with sepsis and so on. So this is exactly the future. And this needs the health organizations and the industry. Without the industry, we can do nothing. That's why the collaboration between 
the academia, administration, and the industry is essential for the future. I mean, we can collaborate with the industry, but the industry needs us for doing some research and innovation that they need. That's why we need to establish the proper ways to collaborate with the industry. Okay? Not for freedom. Because we need revenues. Okay? Then, we need the patients. We need to ask the patients what type of research we want to do. What should we do with the inversion of the age pyramid? So we need the patient. The patients are essential in this process. And, and quite often we forget the patients. And then we need to do this with ethics and taking care of the environment. And this goes too fast. This is adoption of technology. Look at that. So maybe a washing machine was adopted in 20 years or a car in 15 years or whatever. Today, if we are, the industry releases something and this is good for you, this is adopted in minutes. And the example is that one. The chat GPT, you know how many users in five days? Do you know the numbers? Millions, exactly. It was written in the newspaper. Three millions or five millions, I don't know. You know, that's why. I mean, so we need to work together. And based on that, on all this, I'm reading what it appears last week in JAMA. Okay? It says, this era what I'm describing, will show a decrease in intellectual debates among colleagues. I repeat, will show a decrease in intellectual debates among colleagues. You know why? Because generative in artificial intelligence will tell us many things that maybe I will discuss in the coffee break with you or with other people. So we need as well to think on the human evolution. Where are we going? So it's very important, this future that we are facing. So, now, in the hospitals, now we are facing that. So I'm visiting, I'm taking care of a patient. If I have all these tools, I will have synergy of my intelligence, human, your intelligence, and artificial intelligence to achieve a diagnostic excellence. That's why, in the middle of that, there is a lot of disciplines in order to arrive to this point and opportunities as well this is another very I, 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 the presentation is for you you know you can take it but this is an excellent article say look at that now we have data modalities in your project in the hospital wherever and these data modalities are omics metabolites microbiome i mean all the data in the electronic medical records wearables ambient sessions how many of you work at wearable you you everybody this is physiologic information about your body. This needs to be connected with the health record because maybe there is something that I am a physician, maybe I'm not bad, but I'm not seeing what it's there. So maybe this is important for your health. This needs to be analyzed. And in when you go to the emergency area in 100 years, okay, when you go there, I mean, you must have, the system must have some information in order you to treat you better. Okay, that's the future. And then this goes to opportunities. Precision health, clinical digital clinical trials, which is very interesting, hospital at home, uh, digital twins, so digital clinical trials, because if we have tons of data, we can create virtual patients and we can create a digital clinical trial. And then we may have information that will enrich the clinical trial about the drug, because it will define in which phenotype yes or in which phenotype no that drug. And this is, again, the future. So, this is an example of my specialty. I mean, there is a patient here. This patient is monitored. We have ventilator data therapy, waveforms, and then we evaluate the syndrome, clinical evaluation, pre-hospital, da, 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 da. But be careful, when I am in the computer, I must have, you know, a bot or whatever, you know more than me about that, that tell me, um, this patient has been here and have reacted to that drug, da, 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 or whatever, or has this phenotype, so be careful. Until now, I am talking with my colleague, and I say, what do you think? I said, well, maybe, I don't know, which is the intellectual debate. Be careful on that. If we lose the intellectual debate, we are losing something very important, so we need to see where we are, okay? Now, some money. Um, this is from 
several years, 10 years ago, but now it's the same. It's a network biotechnology, so it's not a pink press, okay? And it describes the universities, the revenues of the knowledge of the universities. And everybody was happy about that. But, and the hospitals. In Spain, I don't know any hospital except mine or Vallebron that tells you the revenues of the hospital. But look at that. I'll tell you in one year, eh? in one year, Massachusetts, uh, um, um, Mass General, Mayo, Brigham, as well, and Catherine. I mean, millions of dollars revenue, a lot of uh, startups, and lots of licenses executed. So we need to pay attention to the knowledge at the hospital because we have the patients. At the university, you don't have the patients. And this is important, so we need to work together. And I don't work with the university. My university is in Bella Terra, it's the UAB, it's very difficult. So at the end, you know, but that's life. You know, I don't know in, with which hospital you are working. I'm saying that because in the hospitals, we are providing good health to the patients. We also could be, in that case, I mean, um, um, a source to create uh, wellness, you know, business. Let's talk about business because if this, the knowledge is transformed in business, this will return to here. Let's put the example to Barcelona. And what happened with this technology or whatever? If wants to be used in the United States, they will pay. It's exactly what we are doing right now. They create that and we pay for that. So we need to invert that. So health, very important. Oh, life sciences, I mean, top US universities and institutes, overall gross revenue. In life sciences, I mean, it's a very high percentages, uh, gross revenue, um, licenses, and startup creations. So health, it's a good place, I mean, to work and to innovate. It, and always will be a good place, always will be in fashion. This has appeared in The Economist a week ago. Universities are failing to boost economic growth. Why that? Because maybe universities need to be more open and to work with other people. And this is something that we need to think together. Because you have the knowledge, the knowledge that we need, but we need to go together. So, so well, this is in the in the in the press. You can so if you are so smart, you why aren't you rich? And it's a very nice question. So that we need to think. So the answer of that, the answer of that, I mean, it's provided by the Mayo Clinic, and this is an example. In the Mayo Clinic, they have lots of data, lots of data, and they have partnered with a big company in order to exploit that data. This company is Cerebras. And nothing happens. Nothing happens absolutely, provided you have the right agreement to work together. And this is very important. The right agreement and the right agreement. We have lawyers, I mean, to work on that. But Mayo Clinic work with Cerebra in order to what? To create a specific domain, artificial intelligence expertise to accelerate breakthrough insights for the benefit of the patients. Why that? Because in the industry, in the industry, there is now a lot of knowledge that we need to work with, but in appropriate framework. So keep going. So this is what they say, the nature biotechnology is a top translational research. Why I'm saying that? Because sometimes talking about the public-private collaboration, uh, it's an heresy. Heresy is English, heresia, heresia. Heregia, ¿cómo se dice heregia en inglés? Heregi, heregi, yes. No, I don't know. Well, seems, seems something that cannot be told. You know what I mean? And this is fundamental. I mean, look at that, look at that. Jennifer Dona has a lot of granted patents, you know, have a huge age index of, of, of publications. I mean, this is researchers, researchers. If you work with researchers, pure knowledge, basic knowledge, always you should have in mind whether this can be protected, whether this can be transferred to the industry appropriately and then to work together. This is essential, I mean, to have the health care that we want and the growth of the country. So that an innovation, now a little bit of my field, okay, of what, what we are doing. Well, you are more aware about that. I mean, this is from the, uh, I mean, this is from the 50s and now we have here. Why I'm saying that? Because the most important journal in health in the world, the most important, the highest top journal, which is New England 
which is the New England Journal of Medicine, has created a section of artificial intelligence. And this was one of the first articles. You are perfectly aware of that. You are perfectly aware that now the new vocabulary, I mean, is this, for me, is absolutely non-understandable. But this is telling that there are millions of data that are there. Probably we are using a very low percentage of that data. And that data is essential for the future. So to me, and I don't know if you agree or not, the problem is the data, not the artificial intelligence. If I tell you, you do some kind of supervised machine learning clustering or so, I'm sure you do that in two, three days. But the data is the problem. Because still, we do not have the data in appropriate ways. So if we keep going with that, now uh, processing, I mean, this is here. So uh, it's not an excuse anymore processing. The problem is still the data. So what's clinical information today? This is an image from the internet. This is a patient. You know what is this? This is a monitor for, for lung and heart, cardio cardiorespiratory monitoring. This is a mechanical ventilator. This is a, a machine for hemofiltration, which is says to replace, uh, um, in that case, for renal, for renal therapy. These are the pumps. All these are small computers that provide something for the patient. But today, these are from different manufacturers, different communication protocols, a specific hospital department solutions. In, a, in Catalonia, maybe we have five or six in the hospital department solutions, I mean, to integrate the data. Then, I mean, lack of interoperability, no patient data continuity. But you are good in artificial intelligence, a lot of good, but the problem is the data. And, and here is an opportunity enormous if we trade the data correct. If we keep going and we go to a more, the patient is surrounded of these little computers absolutely necessary for health. But a patient must be taken together with other patients and together with the patients in the hospital and together with the patients in a city or in a community. That's why the data must be taken not as related to a patient, but as related in that case with the, the, with the whole community. And we need the data in a different presentation that they are telling us. If I am a patient uh, myself, I am in, uh, with a monitor, okay? And my hair rate or my oxygen saturation of the blood is taken each one minute or each five minutes, I'm losing something important. That means that I need to monitor the patients at 200 hertz, all the physiologic signals. And then it's a technological, it's a technological, um, um, let's say, it's, a, well, I mean, it needs some technological uh, development. This is an example where I take the mean arterial pressure every hour, and it seems everything is excellent. But every minute, I have this hypotension here that maybe it will affect the brain. And then why this patient is not waking up? Why this patient has this, I mean, cognitive problem when this patient wakes up or whatever? Because if I take this, it has been always hemodynamically correct, but this happened. So we need to have good data. This is an example that I contributed that if I am, so this is flow, air flow, this is pressure, and this is volume. So if I am taking measurement, I mean, what is called this point here, which is very important, I mean, is something occurring, then it's problematic. So we need also to fit the artificial intelligence with the problems in order to have the correct measurements, okay? Now, this is done by I, by the physician. So still, we do not have any kind of artificial intelligence of that. So the stages of that extract and transformation and analysis. Source of data, collected data, curated data, transformed data, analyzed data. You know what that means? That means that I need an each engineer for this state, for this stage. So the new people working with clinicians at the institution. So this is the new future. And this future is will be very rich and very important. Keep going. This is my team, part of my team. We had a dream, an idea, a development to solve a problem. And the problem was that we want to integrate medical signals, independent of the manufacturer. So we start working on agnostic connectivity and interoperability. 
we were one of the first in using the name of agnostic. Agnostic means independent of the communication protocol of the manufacturer and so on. I mean, all these people, the majority are engineers. Without them, there is no project. Okay, and this is what a signals are. These are, you see, oxygen saturation, cardiac rate, mean arterial pressure, and tidal CO2. I mean, the CO2 that we exhale, flow, airway pressure, and tidal volume. This is the basics of the monitoring in the critical care. This, at 200 hertz, and let you think, means lots, lots, lots of the storage capacity and means lots, lots, lots of computing. Well, this is what we are doing. I mean, my institution, together with the spin-offs, we are creating our own, I mean, visors uh, independent of the manufacturer. Just to tell you, I mean, this is commercialized through the spin-off and so on. But also, working with the engineers, this is part of our, we have papers describing algorithms to detect automatically when one patient wants a breath and the machine is not giving that breath, so the patient is uncomfortable. So algorithm that works on signals, some patterns. We are using Bayesian analysis in order to find certain things on outcome. We are using clusters because in the way things happen may affect outcome or not. We are using supervised machine learning. Now we have a very nice paper almost ready to be published about analyzing this waveform. We can provide information to the physician. We can predict using the Markov. The Markov is using in the, in the stock market, in the forecast. And so we can predict how the patient will be in the next 15 minutes so we are doing all databases to predict that is very interesting because we if this patient stays wrong with the machine with the poor patient ventilator interaction this is data in my icu and then we ask to the database we have this information so we know in the next 15 minutes because this is retrospective how the patient will be so we apply the algorithm and then in 81 percent of the cases in the next 15 minutes the patient will stay in the same poor patient ventilator interaction you know what i mean and my issue is not about that issue so we need collaboration with engineers for this type of prediction and to work together. So entropy, I mean, because we are detecting chaos, this provides, I mean, uh, lots of publications, patents, one spin-off. Why that? Because it's, it's, to me, is exactly, we need to disseminate knowledge, but at the same time to protect, to protect the knowledge, because if we license that or we create a spin-off, this means, I mean, work for you, return revenues to the system and so on. I'm finishing. We collaborate in a, in a project which is called Intelli, IntelliLang. Um, I believe that we will not succeed because, to me, the hypothesis and the objective was very ambitious. But the project is, you will see in that case, to implement a wireless artificial intelligence system based on mechanical ventilation uh, that is capable of guiding mechanical ventilation with safer therapy corridors and so on. We will do some advance, but we will not succeed on that because this is more complex than that. The patient is not to take just a button up and down. It's to understand the phenotype, how the patient wants to be ventilated, I mean, how the patient was in the past, and so on and so on. So we need to work together with human knowledge and artificial intelligence. And two final slides. This is the people in the spin-off. Uh, provide solution now they are 22 people they are providing agnostic connectivity essentially we connect everything that um, sends data uh, medical devices in order to provide this data to be analyzed so i mean we are in new projects and the most important today the slide the last one so do not forget something now we are discussing artificial intelligence. We have that report from the government. The kids do not understand what they read, okay? Be careful on that. Knowledge goes from, comes from study, experience, observation, serendipity, some skepticism and evidence. This is knowledge. And this is the knowledge that you must learn. Based on that, I mean, science, knowledge, and wisdom, I repeat. I took the example of the two pandemias, the polio. You know what is this? This is an iron lung. You know what an iron lung do? An iron lung, it seals by the neck. So it's a stank. Stank? It's a, see, well, I mean, it's a stanko. 
Okay? It's a stunt. So, and provides negative pressure. So, the thorax inflates. Air gets in. But expiration is passive. It deflates and expires. So, these patients die for secretion accumulation. Okay? Because they cannot cough. All right? So, mortality in 52, doing this, which is extraordinary, was 80%. There was a guy, okay, an anesthesiology that said, if we tracheostomize the patient with a cannula in the trachea and we use a buck and we do positive pressure with the buck, we can ventilate and we can have an, an, you know, a little tube to aspirate the secretions. When they do that, the mortality decreased from 80% to 20% in six months of that people. That is from knowledge and here was born one of the most important industries in the world and specialties. The industry was the industry of mechanical ventilation and monitoring at the bedside, and the specialty was critical care. So, the COVID. The COVID, we learned that we were not prepared. And this is very important. We were not prepared to have masks because all this was manufactured in China, in Morocco, or whatever and many, many, many things. But we learn also the power of the industry. We can criticize that. But in 10 months, we get a vaccine. And this is important also. I mean, so we need to learn. And the question here is, are we going to forget what we have learned with all this? I'm sure not. But to conclude, I mean, your job, I mean, is to work together. It's exactly what Michelangelo and Alex said. We need to work together. Academia administration, the industry, in order to find solutions. And when we have a problem, we need you at the bedside. You need you to ask together. We need to meet together. I'm absolutely convinced that this is the only way that we will have these higher standards in health, because we will contribute with our knowledge in order to have revenues and so on to maintain these, uh, these, these, uh, these, high, these, these highlights. So without these people, I will not be here. This is the team at the Institute, also my team. Um, this is the T-shirt that CERCA gives to us. When we get the accreditation, we are very happy. We are. This year, we have also had the accreditation of an excellence institute from Carlos III, Ministry of Science. So thank you very much to them, and thank you very much to you. Well, I, ha I have a question. Um, for sure, you are a singular person, eh? because... Uh, uh I don't know. Different from the others, probably. But in your general opinion, what do you think about in, in the hospitals in general? Not the most important, but well, the hospitals, medium hospitals, about the, uh, how close they are to the universities and to the companies. How to break this image about the customer hospitals and sellers uh, industry. So, to, to to be more familiar so you know what i mean no uh, sometimes you or so how to break these barriers uh, th this is important important point i mean oh, um, uh, sometimes at this question i'm using an example saying who can have a nature a publication in nature in cell or in new england my institution maybe not clinic yes vallebron yes your institution, may, maybe, yes. But as most hospitals, what they have for sure is innovation. Innovation can be done for any hospital in the geography. Why? Because the small hospitals, they have the same problems as I have. Maybe they will not have the specialized labs for this type of basic science to provide or, or frontier investigation. Okay? But innovation, they have ideas, they have problems, they have solutions. And a small hospitals, usually they have industry around. If they have industry around, I mean, they can come also to you with the industry in, in order to get a solution. So now, um, a part of what you are saying, I'm coordinating a network, a platform in Spain that is constituted by 26 hospitals. And part of this coordination is, these 26 are very big, but they must work with associated hospitals, a small hospitals, in order to take, in order to help them to accelerate the innovation in these small hospitals. Because innovation can be done for everybody. 
everybody. That's why, I mean, and also in the cities, they have most of the time industry that surrounds the hospital. So, I mean, it's, uh, but simply, I mean, these people don't know nothing. They have no, they have not teach about that. They are not here, maybe, I don't know, maybe you are there. So this is excellent. So we need to take care of that because innovation is for everybody. That's why in the innovation, the whole the system can do things and count. 